This is a quick video on how to use the function on your calculator to plot graphs. So it's really, really useful. These questions come out come up almost without fail in the GCSE every year. And usually if they're involved with negative numbers, which they often are, trying to do this by hand, you are very, very likely to make a mistake. And to be honest, you get no marks for method. There are two marks for this first part of the question. Now, neither of those marks are given for working. So if you try to work out, say, what the X is minus one value was, um, but you didn't get it right, you wouldn't get any marks for the trying. So there is absolutely no reason not to do this on your calculator. And I think, to be honest, we've got to the point where because the calculators can do it, the amount of calculations to do that by hand is not worth two marks. It's worth much more. They are assessing your ability to do this on the calculator at this point. So let's have a look at how we do it. Now I'm doing this on the Casio. Um, it's the very much the same thing on the previous model. If you have that one, the one with the orange buttons. Um, on other on other makes, it will be there, but I'm not sure what it would look like. So what we do first. We press menu and then we go to three for table and obviously you could just press three numerically to get there and it will say f of x equals. Now we know that f of x is a function and so even though this says y equals x squared plus x, we know that it could say if we were using function notation that f of x equals x squared plus x. So what it's asking us to do is to type in the function that we're trying to draw. Now to do that, you'll notice that above the right bracket, there is a red X. And to access those red letters, we use the alpha key, which is next to shift at the top. So we just type it in. So press alpha right bracket, and that will give us an X and then squared plus alpha right bracket. So you just want to type it in so it looks exactly the same as it does. And then we press equals. Now, on the class ways, it will then ask you for what g of x is because it can do two at a time. If you don't have a second function, just press equals and it will just ignore it. On the older models, it doesn't do this. Now, the table range, the start and the end, this is the range of x. So the start value, of x is minus 3, so just type in minus 3, press equals. The end value of x is 3, so press 3, equals. Now the step size is, is what steps it goes up in, it's almost always 1. So in this case it's going up, x is going up in 1, so we leave it a step 1 and we press equals. Now what it's given us is a table of the values. Now remember f of x is y in this case. Now, what's great about this is that once you've got that, you can check that you've put it in right, because that is the problem with calculators, that you could type something in wrong and you wouldn't necessarily know that you were wrong. But this is fine because we can see that the first value is x is minus 3 and f of x or y equals 6, which is what we've got. And then minus 2, 2, which is the same. So we can then start to fill in the blank. So when x is minus 1, f of x is naught. When x is naught, y is naught. Yes, we can see that. Now to get the rest, we'll just have to scroll down. So 1 goes with 2, 2 goes with 6, which we know, and 3 goes with 12. And that's it. Now obviously when you're doing this, we can check because we have some values in the table already, but we know that we would expect the quadratic to be symmetrical. So we're looking for this pattern, the fact that it goes 6, 2, 0, 0, 2, 6. So then we can plot it. Now, this is a tricky one in that the scale is different on the two axes. So we have to make sure that we're actually plotting it in the right place. So minus 3, 6. Minus 2, 2. Minus 1, 0. 0, 0, 1, 2, 2, 6. 3, 12. Okay, now 
the biggest mistake that people will now make is they'll draw in their graph and they'll give it a flat bottom because there are two values that are at naught. Now, obviously, that's not that's not true. Um, it's just that the turning point, the minimum point of this graph is going to be not one of the points that we've calculated. So make sure that your graph not only doesn't have a pointy bottom, which is a different problem, but it also doesn't have a flat bottom. If you have the two points in the, the lowest part of the graph are the same, the graph is going to go below those. So uh, this is very difficult to draw on a, on a screen, so I apologise. I'm going to try my best. Yeah, you know what, that's not bad. I mean, they're not ever looking for it to be perfect. You just got to make sure it goes to all the points. That it's vaguely a curve. That it goes to the edge of the graph. That's a really important bit. Another classic error is where people just draw it and just it stops there. But we know it doesn't. We know it goes on infinitely. So it must go to the edge of the graph to show that you understand that. And the other problem you get with quadratics is people, especially if it's a slightly um, narrower one. So if you had a quadratic that looked like that, you've got to make sure that the arms at the top continue to go out. A really classic error is when people draw a quadratic like that and they end up with these bits at the top coming back in again. Now you'll lose a mark for that because the quadratic doesn't start to come back in. It's always going out. OK, so in summary, the function bottom. So we press menu three. Then you type in exactly as it's written, the algebraic function. You press equals through the extra bit if you get it. And then read from your table of values that you're given the starting X, the end X and the step size, which is almost always one. And then it will give you the table of values to plot. OK, thanks very much.